Hello and welcome to the module one, the single area open short path first version two concepts. All right, this is the first course in the in the enterprise networking security and automation. All right, so um, we'll discuss this chapter and the next chapter on OSPF. Please don't forget to take your notes and submit them when when we're all done. All right, so what do you need to know about OSPF? A couple of things. I want you to write the following down straight off the bat. All right, uh, you can read this off, but listen to what I'm telling you. Uh, write down what I'm telling you. Okay, so OSPF, number one, is a link state protocol. What does that mean? That means it uses the status of the status of the link, the status of the link. That's what I meant to say. So it uses the status of the link, which means it's bandwidth, to calculate the best path. Also, number two, it's fast convergence and scales to a much larger network implementation. It's an open source protocol. It has an administrative distance of 110. Remember, the administrative distance is how trustworthy the path is. Um, what else? Unlimited hop count. Hop count. Each hop is how many routers you can go through. So you can go as many as you want. EIGRP is limited to 100. Convert it. And you can convert it to 255 EIGRP, but really no more than 100 routers away you could be. And, and RIP, the old RIP2, is only 15 hops away. All right. Number uh, five. It has unlimited hop count and support VLSM. We said that already. It uses areas to control routing updates. So you can have area zero, area one, and so on. Area zero is the backbone, and that is required. All right. And it has all of these different OSPF packages, which we'll discuss later on. All right. But I want to take a snippet of this, you know, take a screenshot. This is the database and the tables that they the short path first algorithm creates. It creates these databases on your on the router and it creates these tables. And of course, ultimately we want to get to the um, routing table. So the adjacency tables are all your neighbors. The link state is um, the link state table is a list of the information about all the other routers, all right? And then you got the forwarding table forwarding database, which from there you actually create your, uh, your routing table. All right, so here's a, another thing I want you to write down. The SPF, the spanning, I'm, I'm not spanning, the short path first algorithm creates a spanning, unless it keeps saying spanning, short path, fast, uh, short path first tree by placing each router at the root of the tree and calculating the short path to each node. The short path first tree is then used to calculate the best routes. OSBF places the best route in the forwarding database, which is used to make up the routing table. So what you do, if you remember when we talked about, um, so please write what I said down, this, this bullet point right here. So remember when we talked about uh, STP, and that's the reason why I keep saying STP, because it does really the same thing. But now for every route that you want to go, you go to the root, and there are multiple paths to get to the root, to get to your destination, and your router will pick one path to get to the destination. And just this is at layer three, and that's pretty much like STP. It draws a tree to all the routes to get to your destination, and it will pick one path, the best path. And what is the best path? The quickest way to get there. The routes that has the fastest, or the, or the highest bandwidth, the addition of all the paths. Or all the, uh, like if you're going to a destination from wherever you are, you know, you've got a whole bunch, you know, from where you are and you're gonna get to your destination, there are multiple routes. That's a tree with a lot of branches. So you're going to pick the path that has the uh, the route the, the routes with the hot 
you know, the roads that have the highest bandwidth, highest speed limit, in other words. You'll pick highways to get to your home. All right, so that's what OSPF does. Um, another thing we talked about, okay, we'll, we'll get to the operation in a few minutes. Uh, areas, this is very important. And OSPF area is a group of routers that share the same link state information in their LS database. Okay, so that's important to know. Write that down. And also write down that area zero is the backbone. And all other areas must connect to it. Is that clear? So if you are going to do area zero, it have to be done first before anything else. In this course, we are going to concentrate at... Uh, OSPF area zero only. We're not going to do a multi-area OSPF. If you are to do that, what we're going to do is you're going to create another area, maybe area 51, another area three, but they all have to go through the backbone if they want to communicate with each other. So this is like the backbone. Everybody has to come to it. All right. Now, um, what does... What does do we do the areas? Well, I actually this is 51 and area one, but they have to go through the, like we said, the backbone area zero. All right, why do you break them up into areas? Because now you have less routing tables because you have less routers in each area. Uh, reduced link updates. You have less updates to send to your neighbors and reduced frequency of calculations because you have less, less routers when a link breaks you know, a, you know, the program doesn't have to run as much. All right. So um, what else do you need to know? OSPF v3 version 3 is really for supports IPv4 and IPv6. That's good to know. Moving on. Let's take a look at the packets now. There are five different packets. And the really big one that we need to worry about is the hello. Um, so please take a snippet of this. You have the hello packet, and you have the data description um, database packet. You have the LSR, the request, link state request, link state update, and link state acknowledgement. All right? The hello packet is what we need to really worry about. Oops, I'm sorry. Worry about. And uh, these are the different types of hello packets. Um, packets. So depending on what type. So type one is the hello. All right. So um, within the hello, there is the LSAs, a whole bunch of different types of LSAs that you could do. Right? So it's regular actual packet, and here's the type, for example. The hello packet type and all of that. Okay, and this is will tell you um, the what is it? The packet specific data, hello packet. In here so here's the type one this is it tells you that it's a hello packet for example right all right and uh, so the hello packet here's what you need to write down about the hello packet please write the following one it's a type one because it comes up on the test a lot um, number two it, it, it discovers OSPF neighbors and established neighbors adjacency so you're saying hello every 10 seconds Right? And if you respond, you know, that means you, you're telling the people here, I'm your neighbor by saying hello. Right? Uh, advertises parameters on which two routers must agree to become neighbors. All right? So the hello packets are the ones that allow you to become a neighbor. Uh, to do that, you must agree on three things. Okay? So please write the following down. Although we'll discuss that a little bit more on the next chapter. So three things you have to be be in the to be a neighbor number one you have to both agree at the hello interval the debt interval and the protocol so you have to say for example if every 10 seconds you say hello your neighbor has to say hello every 10 seconds uh you consider your neighbor to be dead if after four times the hello interval he didn't say anything to you so after 40 seconds in this example um, if you did not hear anything from your neighbor that means he's dead no longer there and you also have to agree on what type of packets you're going to be <coughs> transmitting and in this case it's an ip uh, also of course you have to be in the same area so the hello packets are the ones that allow you to become uh, is the one that you use to uh, create the 
neighboring table. Number four with the hello packet is you elect the designated router and the backup designated router on a multi-access network like Ethernet. Point to point, links do not require a designated router or a backup designated router. <coughs> we'll talk about that um, later on. Here's the hello interval, and here's the dead time interval, and all that information about the designated router and the backup designated router and so on. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, so uh, these are the states that they go down to that LSBF um, who goes through when they want to operate, when they start operating. So you can take it, please take a snippet of this one and this one, and please read through them. And these are the states when they, as soon as you boot up your router and what happened. So the down state is no hello packets. The initial state is hello packet received that contains the router ID and a multi address 224.00. Then the two-way two -way state is, that's the third one, is you elect the designated router and a backup designated router. Then you got the X start state. This is you when you decide a router to initiate the DBD, the description database, packet exchange, you know, point-to-point -point networks, for example. Then you do the exchange state. That's when you exchange the database description packets. Then you do the loading state. That means when you have the link state requests and link state SCUs are exchanged and routes are processed by the, by the short path first algorithm. And then you go full state. This is when you actually have Everything is synchronized and you're ready, good to go. All right, so that's, okay, we talked about that. This is when you go through these, synchronizing the databases. Okay, now, here's the thing. Uh, if you have a multi-access network such as this, that means this is how um, routers work. If this guy, for example, um, he has to send updates to all his neighbors. So he sends his routing table to four. Oops, let me just go back a little bit. He has to send his routing table to these four and these, this guy's to these four. There's a lot of adjacencies you have to do. So that creates a tremendous amount of traffic. So what they decided to do is we elect one router. This is the actual equation to calculate how many adjacencies you have to create if you have five routers. And the more this increases, the more adjacencies you have to create, then it becomes you know, um, unmanageable. And the traffic will be tremendous when they try to pass updates, LSUs and LSRs. So what they decided to do is we create a designated router where all of these routers send their updates to one router, a designated router. And then the designated router will send the routes to everybody else. This will reduce all the updates. So therefore, with OSPF, we have to create a designated, we have to elect a designated router. All right, and we'll discuss more of this. I just want to go back later on. So please write the following down. In a multi-access network, OSPF, this is the multi-access network. OSPF elects a designated router. I'm sorry, in a multi-access network, OSPF has issues, right? It creates multiple adjacencies and extensive floodings, right? Broadcasting all over, all over, all over flooding of LSAs. So the, what, what is the solution? The solution is OSPF will elect a designated router to be the collection and distribution point for LSAs sent and received, okay? A backup designated router is also elected in case the DR fails, the designated router fails. All other routers will become DR others, okay? And a DR others router, that's what this is, is a router that is neither a designated or a backup designated router. OSPF router looks for the highest router ID to elect a designated router. Okay, so please write everything that I just said, and we'll get into that when we start configuring OSPF, and I'll explain that in a little bit more details when we are in the next chapter. All right, in the meantime, write everything I told you to do and upload that as homework and I'll see you on the next chapter.